lovers welcome to my channel my name is made for love and welcome to a karmic or third party reading but today i'm not going to be using the tarot in the general reading i'm going to be using um beetroot <laughs> and ginger i don't know guys i think this is definitely uh, my element um you know using these um natural products whether it's a sorrel or the cocoa or the tea um, to read and and it should be because <laughs> I have so much earth placements it is not funny I've got uh, earth grand trine Virgo stellion my Jupiter's in Virgo my Mercury's in Taurus Sun Taurus moon capricorn the only thing that gives me a bit of razzle dazzle <laughs> so i like to call it um is my pisces rising and venus in gemini otherwise this is where this this is me this is earth grounded grounded energy this is me so i'm um, definitely i'm going to enjoy pulling out the messages um for you guys today okay um before i start just to let you guys know i've opened up um march bookings for um, twin flame checks. So if you've already had one and you want to know what this this void energy is doing because this is what this, this is Okay, nobody can tell me differently. This is what is vo this is this is a void energy What this void energy is doing you can have that check up um, I've added also some emergency spots um, For twin checks and spirit release therapy for tomorrow for delivery for tomorrow So if you're interested in that there are some on my website if you go on and the emergency spots um, the emergency fees are sold out email me and i might be able to fit you in on tuesday okay um akashic record and karma clearing is also open and spirit release therapy is also open especially during this void time um it's it's really difficult sometimes to raise your vibration when we're going through it so if you or your twin needs to be cleared um that service is also open and i've also ha i also have about two emergency fees um that are on the website that you can have for tomorrow delivery okay so <clears throat> let's get into this um the music that I'm, you're gonna hear more natural sounds because i'm basically blowing up my house you have to clear a little more often <laughs> during the void energy so i'm doing that right now and what came up for the meditation is um a meditation for the vagus nerve um and that kind of dovetails into um, the message that I want to give you guys today before I start the reading. Because we're going to dive into the third party karmic energy. But let's see about ourselves first. Um, and the message today is really about hypervigilance. Okay. Now, when you've been through a traumatic situation, and some of us have ongoing traumatic situations, it's, it's never really over, right? It's, it's kind of continuous. Bam, 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 bam. Till it, it, sometimes it seems like trauma <clears throat> is our default, right? And I guess that's me, it could be, and I'm not saying it is, you know, a lot of karma, clarity, and transmuting taking place for yourself, your ancestral line, right? From a spiritual um, point of view, but that is not to um, do any kind of spiritual bypass and really tone down um, the massive impact um, that can have on the indiv individual in the 3D, right? It, it, it's not downplaying that at all, right? <clears throat> but sometimes when we've been through trauma or, well, all the time when we've been through trauma, you know, our nervous system gets rewired and it gets rewired for vigilance. So we're always scanning people, always scanning situations um, for some sort of attack, some sort of betrayal, um, something bad happening. And this is definitely, <clears throat> I can't even speak right now. Because and this is definitely something that I'm continuously, you know, trying to take a step back and really reevaluate really the situation and try to figure out, you know, is this some sort of threat or is this just me reacting from a place um, of wounding? So there's always that step back that I have to take, and it was really brought into focus. Um, I think it was last night. Last night. So my brother is here with me. He's here for some sort of tournament. And my family loves this Chinese restaurant that's just, just near me. 
So we went to get some takeaway. They just, I mean, the way they prepare the food is so fresh and the chunky veg. Anyway, I can go into that. I'm not really a Chinese food person, but I like their food. And my brother and I pulled up. It was about 8 p.m., so it's pretty dark. My brother and I pulled up, and he went inside to get the food, and I'm there in the car park, and I feel usually safe there, okay? And all of a sudden, I was looking down on my phone, and when I looked up, there was this, I just saw a guy right at my window. I didn't have my mask on. His mask was um, improperly on. And just as an immediate reaction, I said, no, um, I don't want anything. Because I knew he was selling something, but I was just thinking about myself and the fact that I didn't have on my mask. So I could possibly give him something and then he could possibly give me something. But I was really thinking about he could possibly give me something. And then I didn't know what he really wanted or anything like that. I didn't, I didn't know his intentions. So I said, no, I'm not interested in anything. And he just kind of stepped back and went and stood in front of the Chinese restaurant. Now that I'm seeing him in the light, I'm realizing, so I have time now to reevaluate. Re I'm realizing that it's, it's, it's a child. I'm about 13 years old. And in his hands, um, had bay leaf, which is what, which I wanted. Okay. Which I wanted. Listen, and you can't imagine how much bay leaf. I'm going to show you in a moment. Which I wanted. And I was like, you know, I really overreacted. But maybe I didn't. I don't know. But that's just that time to be able to reflect on the situation. I was able to put everything into perspective. He had something that I wanted. And... I can simply put on a boundary, which was my mask, right? <laughs> I can put on a boundary, a boundary and I could get what I wanted. And I also realized his demeanor had completely deflated from my reaction because he did not know why I was telling him no in such, an, in such a harsh manner. And, but it was, I was concerned about my safety, right? So I put on my mask and I called him over. And then when I called him over, I said, the reason why I reacted like I did before um, is because I didn't have my mask on. And I didn't want either of us to get anything, right? And it kind of took me by surprise. And when he heard that, his, he just had, a, there was this lift in his personality because he recognized it wasn't anything to do with him personally. And I wasn't shaming him or anything like that. It was just that I was concerned about both of our safety. So he relaxed, I relaxed. And I was like, what do you have there? Is that bay leaves? He said, yes. I said, how much for it? And he said, $20, 20, 20 TT is about $3. So listen. This is what you get for $3. It's, it's basically a bloody... Um, I don't know if you cut down the whole tree. I don't know, right? All this was for 20 TT, which is about 3 US. So, just putting on that minor, that boundary there. I was able to get what I wanted. He was able to get what he wanted. And we just kind of settled things between us. And the energy became very harmonious. And I'm saying sometimes that's, a, that's all you need. You don't need to push people away. All you have to do, you just have your boundary up. And you reevaluate the situation. Now, some people are going to be on shit, okay? Definitely. When we step back and reevaluate, we know that some people are on shit. But some people really do have what we want, what we need. And they do have all good intentions at heart, but we're there acting. Just, we're just reacting. That reptilian and brain kicks in, we're just reacting. So, I'm just asking you right now to just step back from any kind of situation that you may feel um, is a threat to you. And just reevaluate. You have different tools now. You have boundaries now, right? Okay, so you don't have to guard yourself um, so viciously. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, so just take a step back, reevaluate. Some of you, if you want, you could put on that Vegas nerve uh, meditation. Just calm down, reevaluate. And if you still think that they need to fuck off, well, they need to fuck off. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> that was a message. All right, so let me just put my hands in this just a little bit. Okay nicely and let's see what is the message today so this is beetroot um and ginger which is a very nice health drink may i tell you okay so guys let me see what's happening today we're asking about um the karmic situation um spirit tell us what's happening first we want to ask i'm going to do it a little structured and then get free 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 hand messages okay we're going to ask about divine masculine in this situation um spirit tell us what's happening Divine masculine in this situation is sequestering himself. This is the, that's the word 
I heard sequestering. Sequestering. <laughs> I mean, they may be on jury duty, okay? And maybe they are trying to judge a situation. Okay, so that's why I brought you that message about stepping back and reevaluating a situation because this is how I feel right now. Okay, that's the message that's coming through for me. I'll put a little bay leaf right there. Um, for good luck. Hey, this is very good for bringing in uh, money if you burn bay leaf, okay? Just an aside. So maybe they're thinking about their money right now. Maybe they're thinking about a protection because this is also very good for protection. Bay leaf, okay? Maybe that's why I needed the whole bloody branch. Anyway. So they're thinking about themselves, their life, their money, their stability, but they're also reassessing um, their relationships, not just with an intimate partner, but other karmics, those persons who are teaching them lessons in this life. Okay. And it could be a whole set of them. Look them here. They're on this side of the fence. And that's what your person has put up. They've put up a fence. They put up a boundary, right? So that's why I brought you that message today about hypervigilance. So your person is realizing My spirit is also saying that they are, they have erected a fence against you at the moment as well. Okay, a little boundary. They're also reevaluating you. Um, and they're trying to figure out your intentions. Okay, so they're sequestering themselves from everybody. They're being the judge. Okay, um, they have some kind of verdict that they have to pronounce upon. And they are judging everybody um, on their own merit. Um, reflecting on each relationship and what has happened in that connection, that relationship. And deciding if it will go... Or if it will stay. And you know what? You are meant to do the same, right? Everybody needs to think about their protection and their well-being right now, right? Everybody has to safeguard themselves. You put on your mask first, right? In the plane, right? In the plane, everywhere now. Put on your mask first and then you worry about um, everybody else. So this is what your person's doing. I think they're very self-protective at this time. They're realizing that they're people that don't have their best interests at heart. And they're trying to see about their own mental health. That's what I heard. Their own mental and physical health. And maybe you're in a masculine. If you're, because I talked about this being a health drink. Maybe your inner masculine also needs a little bit of TLC too. Okay. So right now you're meant to see about yourself. But that's an aside. So they've withdrawn from their friends. They've withdrawn from their partner. They may have even withdrawn um, um, from, from life, really, from life. And they're, feeling, they're realizing that they're feeling empty. Now, some of them may be eating donuts at this time, but I, I'm getting donuts means um, an indulgence. So if you know your person, may have had an, they tend to disassociate um, either through drinking or... It, I mean, just scrolling, it could be scrolling, scrolling on TikTok may have some kind of um, drug issue or whatever it is that they, they do. And um, when they're in pain, I think they may be indulging. For some of them, they're definitely eating um, some sweets, some donuts, um, stuck in the caffeine, who knows. But there's something that they're doing, a little coping mechanism. I don't think they're overdoing it too much. But they have a little coping, me coping mechanism going on and they've erected a firm boundary around themselves, right? They're in their safe space. Right here, they're in their safe space. Now, for some of them, I think they recently had a very big explosion, an emotional explosion, okay? Um, and I think they may have exploded on these people here. And it was a very emotional release. And I'm feeling, because this looks like a volcano, a lot of Mars energy, okay? Mars, Plutonian energy. That's what I'm getting here. So some sort of tower moment, um, some sort of awakening happening, and I think they just erupted. So they're realizing that they're not fit for company right now, and they're keeping themselves safe, and they're also keeping other people safe because they're not fit for company um, at this time. We can ask, and let's ask in the extended what the explosion was about, just in case it doesn't come out in the reading. So let's ask that, right? Okay. And we're also going to, we'll still ask, who are they um, establishing boundaries with? 
I think that's everyone though. <laughs> So DM very self-protective. Let me get any, let me see if there's any other messages um, about DM right now. <laughs> I don't know. I saw a phallus when I was moving, so I'm, I'm recreating it again, right? Um, they're also thinking about the way they've handled themselves with regard to their sacred, sacral chakra energy, okay? Um, I think at this time, your person, they're, they're hoarding all this to themselves. They're hoarding all, all this, um, to themselves. Um, I'm just getting a lot of anger. Cause a lot of anger. Um, and it's anger that they've had like long buried because this is an arrow i thought i was recreating um a phallic symbol it's not it's not um it's an arrow i thought it was a phallic symbol but no it's an arrow it's an arrow they are revisiting the past okay they're revisiting the past because they're realizing that the resentment that they have inside especially resentment that they have towards feminine energies that is now really exploding and coming to the surface. The clue lies in the past. So they're revisiting the past at this time. Now it could be past relationships. It could go right back to the childhood. Some of them, some of them may be even getting dreams about past life. But right now their direction um, is to the past. And it also points in east. East is the direction of Archangel. Um... Raphael, Raphael, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, right? Raphael, right? Um, and he's all about heart healing, isn't he? So they recognize in order to heal their heart and to really deal with this hyper, hyper defensive kind of attitude that they have, hyper, hyper vigilance, they have to go back to this, I'm here in the scene of the crime. They got to go back to the scene of the crime. And heal what happened there. So they're realizing the key to unlock and to release the anger that they have and the resentment that's always simmering inside of them. They have to go back to the past. We're going to ask what happened there. Right? So we'll ask that in the extent of what happened there. Just in case it doesn't come out. And I'm going to ask about that scene of the crime thing because I am getting like it is a real crime. So we're going to ask about that, okay? Let's see if we get some messages. All right. Anything else on DM? What the hell is this I'm making? What is that? A gun. I mean, it's a weird-ass gun. It looks like a laser gun or something like that. Why are they showing us that? Oh, maybe it's a bird. Could be a bird. Guys, I'm getting that there was there was some sort of violent encounter. Cause even this looks like a tea and I'm hearing true crime. What is this? There's something that happened in the past. It, it's and it's something criminal. It's something criminal. What is 
this about? Somebody was violated. For some of them, you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing pre-verbal trauma. Pre-verbal trauma. So before they could even speak, something happened here. For some, it happened in utero. Others when they were baby. And it manifests itself at this time with some sort of lower back pain um, that your person has. They, they have a spinal issue. I'm going to ask about that pre verbal trauma reference. So for some, they're, they're, they're reacting to something that they don't even remember or can even process. Okay, let's have a look at um, how the karmic um, is feeling at this time. Pissed the fuck off. They are pissed off. Um, and they are telling everybody who has an ear to hear about it. Uh, they might be sp spreading gossip um, about your person at this time. But right now they're in absolute terror. Okay. <laughs> um, in my country they say mouth open and story jump out. Right. So that telling everybody about your person including any kind of financial issues your person may have had they're telling people about that they're telling people about masculine secrets including um some sort of trauma that he may have had um as a child or something that he may have been involved in they're telling everybody about it because they are pissed all right, we're going to ask why Karmic is pissed. They are pissed off. What else? What's happening here? Now, this Karmic has been spreading themselves pretty thin, okay? I am getting that they may have someone else, okay? They may have someone else, um, and I think your person found out about it. This person that they have, um, that they are in love with, um, was before they even met your DM. Yep, they had a very long-standing relationship. Also very tumultuous. But this person had money. And this person um, had ambition. Um, and he had rising star. Rising star. And Kami wanted to be on um, their bandwagon. But what happened? What happened? Someone came and separated them. So Karmic has also been separated um, from some sort of soulmate that they see as their own, as their yin and yang. DM was just a filler.
And this is some someone that the karmic really loved. The karmic thought that, you know, the sun rose and set with this person. Yeah, the karmic put this person on a pedestal. So what happened? So the karmic also has a lot of simmering resentments. Um, and that's because um, they also have a true love that just upped and left them. Just up, up and away. And just left them. For some of them, no explanation. And your karmic try to drown themselves um, in work. They try to drown themselves in work as a way to deal with this pain. But they never really trusted anyone again. They don't, even, they don't trust your DM, you know. They don't trust your DM at all. And they're always kind of emotionally exploding on your DM because they have never dealt with that abandonment um, from that soulmate that they had. And everything is kind of rising to the surface right now. This is what the void energy is doing. So your person's very volcanic. Okay, right now, very volcanic. And so too is the comic. Everybody's kind of explosive. Because it's the first time that they're dealing um, with this core issue. It's the first time that they're dealing with this core issue. They chose your DM because your DM was low-hanging fruit. Strange fruit, strange fruit. Your, your DM is a little different than what they used to choose before. And they thought this time they would manifest. Well, they thought that, they that your DM was different. And they thought they would manifest a different outcome. And your DM was also easy because your DM was also looking for that... It um, external validation your demon was also looking for escape so it was basically a trauma bond they chose each other because it was easy it was easy There was never any depth that both of them were trying um, to escape their trauma and pain. I'm getting with them is something way, way in the past. And with karmic, it was the relationship just before DM. So it's a trauma bond. That's what it is. It's a trauma bond. The only thing I was holding them together um, was money and was abundance, you know, financial stability. But there's, there was never anything um, real there. And, and now both of them know it. Both of them know it. So it looks like DM is in his corner, really trying to sort things out, really trying to process. Yeah, so DM is in his corner. That's how um, DM is processing his emotions, okay? Um, withdraw and really internalize. Karmic, how they process their emotions. Um, they project and externalize and blame everybody for um, their issues. Internalize when you're ready to 
he'll have to take some sort of accountability. Karmic's not ready for that yet. They're not ready for that yet. They're just ready to cast aspersions and do the whole blame game. And they're, they're telling everyone about it. So if your DM told the karmic any kind of secrets, if they showed the karmic any sort of pictures, if your DM had, um, I, I don't know why I'm getting that, a, a child that nobody knew about, like their family members didn't know about, they are telling everybody, everybody. Everything that DM said, all the lies, because I see the notes here, all the lies that DM may have told them, all the truths that DM may have told them, they're telling everybody. Their family members, their friends. Um, and this is what narcissists do. This is what narcissists do. When they can't control someone, they will control how other persons see that someone. So we're going to find out why um, the karmic is doing it, but it looks like DM has completely withdrawn. Um, from this and many of his other um, relationships. Now, if this is what you're getting about your counterpart, join me next time. We're going to ask these questions. We're going to ask why this karmic is so pissed and so bent on destroying DM's character. Um, we're going to ask what's this big explosion that um, DM recently had. Um, we're going to ask who are they establishing boundaries with at this time. We're going to ask what's happening in the past. What happened in the past? Um, and what's that reference to the scene of the crime? We're going to ask about what this was this about pre revolt trauma. We're going to ask how DM is seeing you. Um, how DM is seeing the comic. Um, and DM's next actions. Within a month of you um, watching this reading, okay? All right, so if you're able, join me next standard. Um, if you're not able, I am so grateful for your likes, your shares, all your lovely comments um, down below, your dislikes. They all help with the algorithm and, you know, it helps our community expand um, and grow. So I hope this resonated for you guys. Take care. Much love. Bye.